At the beginning of the trial, I issued an order of decorum as to how th these proceedings were to be conducted. And you've all done really well. No one has really disrupted the proceedings in a manner to disrupt it. And I am thankful to all of you for having abided by my rules. This is the time for closure for many of you, as this will be the last court proceeding. And as such, I don't expect that you won't feel emotions. You will. And that's absolutely understandable. And I am not really talking about that. What I am talking about is disruption of proceedings. And the two parts of the order of decorum that relate to the public members are the following. That uh, you are not to disrupt the proceedings through any verbal communication such as loud talking, shouting, yelling, calling out, or making any verbal noise intended to be heard by the court and the parties. <coughs> And the other is to hold up or wear any signs or symbols intended to influence, impact, or disrupt the orderly processes of the proceedings. Now, as I said, you've not done that, and I don't expect that to happen today, but I'm simply reminding everyone that the order of decorum is still in force today. Now, <clears throat> I need to deal with a couple of business matters before we get to the actual sentencing itself, and the first relates to the probation report. Now, under Penal Code Section 1203, <coughs> Subdivision B, Paragraph 2, sub Subparagraph E, when the court is not in possession of a probation report at the time of sentencing, and I do not have a probation report for either Ms. Barron or for Mr. Leva, counsel may stipulate the waive the probation report for these proceedings, and the court will direct the probation department to author a report and send it along with the defendants later on. The, co the code section I just recited says the following. The time within which the report shall be made available and filed may be waived by written stipulation of the prosecuting and defense attorneys that is filed with the court or an oral stipulation in open court that is made and entered upon the minutes of the court. So I've spoken to you all about this and my understanding is that each side is willing to stipulate that the report is not necessary for today's proceedings. Is that correct, Ms. Sperber? Yes, Your Honor. We, we wait for the sentence report at a later date. Thank you. And Mr. Nardoni? Yes, it is. And for the people, Mr. Hatami? Yes, Your Honor. Stipulation is received. This brings us to the part relates to that relates to the public, and that is the victim impact statements. So, Tommy, I understand that there are a number of people who wishes to address the court. Is that correct? I believe there's 11, Your Honor, who, who would like to speak, and then there's six or seven that they want me to read, read their statements. Is you may begin. Correct? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we're going to start with uh, uh, the juveniles, Your Honor. The first is Destiny. Uh, first initial of the last name is O, uh, and she's with her uh, family members. Destiny is uh, Anthony's sister. It's okay, honey. You can stand right here. And you can open if that you want, or you can read it. Whatever you want. You tell the judge whatever you want to say. And you take your time. Take your time, Destiny. It's okay. How about this? Why don't you have other people go okay. so that Destiny can see how it goes? Thank you, Your Honor. And then if she wishes to make the statement herself, she could do so. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank All right. you, Destiny. She sit there for a little while, okay? Thank you. And, and we 
here's the thing. You're just you're making a statement to the judge. That's it. And it's, there's no wrong or right way to do it. It's just your way. And that's okay. That's okay. Whatever way you want to do it is the way you're going to do it. Um, Matthew, you want to talk? Okay. So Matthew, first initial of the last name is P, Your Honor. Anthony's cousin. Yes. And you can hold this if you want, and Maria can hold you too. No, no, no. you want to hold it? Okay, so I'll hold it. <laughs> and you see the judge, he's up there, and you can tell the judge wherever you want, okay, Matthew? Okay. Do you have his paper? Yes. You mean Matthew doesn't have it memorized? Right. <laughs> you didn't memorize it. I, I, I couldn't read the paper. Okay, tell you, tell you. Is that yours, Matthew? I'm good. Okay. Dear Judge, my name is Matthew Barron. I am eight years old and I miss my cousin Anthony. I was a baby when I last saw him. I wish I could remember all our time together, but all I have is pictures and stories that my family tells me. Anthony was an amazing company, full of life and love. He always played with me and and made me laugh. I have family and I have a video that I like to play over and over of him making me laugh when I was little. We never got, I, we will yeah. never get to see Anthony up, grow up. I never, I will never get to play with my older cousin. He will teach, he will get to teach me how to play baseball or play catch with him. Heather, who's supposed to be my aunt, took Anthony away from us. Heather is an evil monster, and she deserves to spend the rest of her life in prison. I don't forgive Heather for taking my cousin's life, and I hope she gets beat up in jail because I just wanted to meet Anthony. I hope Heather has a horrible life. Anthony is in a better place, and someday we'll be together We and again, and we will be able to make new memories. I always carry you in my heart, Anthony. Love you and miss you very much. Thank you for your time on here. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. The next one is Dana B. <coughs> Ever since the death of my cousin Anthony, things have never been the same for me, my family, and so many others around me. I used to call Heather my aunt, but now I can only call her a monster. Anthony's death has brought so much sadness and depression into my family. When Anthony died, he didn't just take him from me. I lost my mother when she was no longer able to... When she was sent into a depression because of his death, I really saw hearts that could never be healed. When they killed Anthony, they not only took my cousin away from me, you took someone I saw as a brother. Someone I grew up with. Someone I shared so many memories with. Someone I had so much love for. I want you to be imagine being ten and finding out your cousin was murdered and tortured by the monster you used to call Aunt. It's a trauma that can never be healed. I'll never forget the day my mom left to the hospital after she got the call. I had never seen her rush leave the house so fast. And I was so confused what was going on. But the next day we got the call. Anthony was dead. And I would never get to see him again. When Heather stopped allowing us to see the kids and wouldn't let us talk to them anymore. I always had dreams of reconnecting with them in the future. I always thought I'd be able to see my cousin again. But that dream was crushed thanks to Heather and Kareem. 
as I get older, it, it begins to really hit me that he is gone. The pictures of what those monsters did to him will forever be embedded in my, into my mind, and no amount of time or help will ever heal the pain I have in my heart because of that. No matter how many years go by, the pain of his death will always linger. The sadness, the pain, the anger, all of the emotions we all felt will never